Next up, let's take a peek at the media screen for the vehicle. So this is going to be a fairly in-depth look at the vehicle and the media screen and what this thing can do. Button press along the very top is going to be for our profiles, so we can literally select that in order to be able to set up individual profiles, which is great, because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can have it remember things like your cell phone settings, you can have it remember things like what's going on with your own personal presets for the radio, things like that, so you've got quite a few flexibility and quite a few options that are available there. We've got a hot button press in order to be able to get into our factory navigation, which this thing is fairly responsive. We can easily do a pinch to zoom if we want to, now, searching for an address is very straightforward, so we can literally just type in as we go. So we just start typing, and it is not a predictive text, so we just kind of start typing there, and then we just hit OK after we've hit the first part, and then it gives us a few different options for selecting a few different routes, etc. So we can select any of the available routes, we can star it, save it as our home or our work address, we can look at different route options as well. So we've got the single route there, we can literally see what other ones are available. So by looking at others, we've got the fastest route, we've got the most eco-friendly, or we've got the shortest route there as well. So we do have some flexibility as to what's actually showing up there, which is definitely a nice thing. We've got details for that route, so if we hit details, we can see exactly what's going on with the route, or we can just hit start. So when we hit start, we can see exactly what's going on with the route itself. We can hide this bottom part. We can also lower this part of the screen up to see exactly how far in the route we've gone. And we can also swipe between these subscreens to see a few other things. So we can see the exact route we're taking. We can also see the distance indication. We can see the physical route and a number of other things. And we can also hide that out. Like I said, we can easily just kind of do a pinch to zoom if we wanted to. We can do a drop down that way if we want. We can recenter as well. And it is very straightforward. So we can also do a 3D versus a 2D view as well. So whatever one you'd prefer, you can kind of jump between options there. We can mute this thing out, so if you don't want to get any notifications as you're going between different things, we can literally press that button in order to get rid of any notifications we might have. Button press there again in order to be able to end the route. As you can see there, it saves it as a recent destination. We can look at our saved addresses. We've got food that's available, fuel that's available, and other point of interest that are available there as well. So it is kind of nice that there are so many options available there. We've got our phone settings there. So as you can see, as of right now, there aren't any phones that are connected to the vehicle. So adding a device is very straightforward. We're just going to press add a device there. And on our own, that came up quick. We're just looking for a Land Rover Defender, and we're just going to push that button there. And we want to make sure the pin numbers match up. Allow contacts and favorites to sync. Yes, we want to allow that. And we're connected. So as we can see there, we can look at phone and media. So we can look at different options there for just media if we wanted to. We can also enable text messaging, use it as a default device. We can auto connect. So if we have multiple vehicle phones that are connected to the vehicle, we can have this one set up as a default device. So it'll always connect to this first device instead. We can auto connect. So if there are multiple devices, etc. we can set our voicemail numbers, download our images, or we can forget the device. So it is pretty straightforward there. Moving back, as you can see, we are now fully connected. Moving back again, we've got mo mobile data, Android phone settings, Apple iPhone settings there as well. So we're going to go iPhone settings, which as of right now, I'm not connected. So we do have the flexibility of being able to set up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of this. And Apple CarPlay will start there. Just going to take a USB cable, plug it into that front USB port there. Opposite end of the cable. And we're just going to plug ourselves in. And do we want to allow CarPlay with the Rover while the Defender is locked? Yeah, we want to make sure we do that. And as you can see, we are fully connected. So we've got my Apple Maps if I wanted to, we've got Google Maps, we can use Waze, we can literally use any of these map applications directly through this middle screen if we wanted to. And it's just as responsive whether we're using our phone apps there or whether we're using the built-in navigation. Button press there in order to get back to that main screen. But as you can see, we do have a radio app. So LiveX Live and Pandora will work through Apple CarPlay. And we've got a few other options there. Now, one of the cool things, if we go into general settings under CarPlay, We've got, so we're going to go USB only, and as you can see there, we've got the Rover Defender. We've got the option of customizing, so we can literally just kind of do a drag and drop in order to be able to kind of adjust the way that this screen is laid out based on our own personal preferences. If we accidentally delete some things, it'll be at the very bottom of the screen. We can also press a reset in order to reset it back to our factory default screen there instead. So we do have a, quite a little bit of flexibility there. Pushing back to this main screen, we have a few different ways that we can kind of get back to the main rover screen there as well. So honestly, the easiest way to do it, pushing the whole button there. And as you can see, we are now fully back on that main screen, but we've got my phone connected there, which if we click on that, we've got my iPhone and we can connect to Bluetooth, etc. We jump back into phone there. And as you can see, we, we're right back into Apple CarPlay because we are connected through CarPlay. So if we want to be able to remove a phone, what we're going to do 
is go there into the very bottom and we've got our Apple iPhone settings. So we can use CarPlay so we can literally toggle this thing off if we wanted to, which is great because I'm still charging the phone connected and we can connect over Bluetooth there as well. We've got quite a few different settings and quite a few different options there, but if we go back inside, we've got home screen or we can look at all different settings. So we've got my iPhone settings, we've got Bluetooth devices. So if we go to Bluetooth devices, we've got my phone and we can disconnect it if we wanted to. We can use it for phone and media, strictly for media. We can disable messaging and a number of other things there. We can forget the device very easily or we can just con disconnect it. So forgetting a device, literally that forward, straightforward. We just hit forget a device and it now is fully disconnected. Because we go back home again, the device is now forgotten. We click on connect phone and it's no longer there because we've had to forget it instead of just simply disconnecting it instead. And it really is that simple setting up an iPhone inside of this vehicle. All right, now setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So what we're gonna do, we're on the main pair screen, but if we weren't on that screen, just on the main home screen here, we can literally just simply hit connect phone. And very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, what we're gonna do is first and foremost, make sure we're there and we're looking for Land Rover Defender. And we are connecting there. Perfect, yes, we're connected. So literally is that simple. And as you can see, very similar options to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. So I'm just denying those things. If you're obviously connecting permanently, just make sure you connect that permanently there. But we can use it for phone and media, for messages, default devices. We can set voicemail numbers. We can forget the device there very simply as well. And then very similar to the iPhone side of things, we also have the flexibility of being able to set up Apple CarPlay. And it's very straightforward and very similar to what we just saw. We're just gonna take our USB cable. We're gonna plug it in. Opposite end, we're just going to plug ourselves in there as well. Boom. And it's going to take just a second. Android Auto would like to look at how quick that was. Nice and quick there. And we're going to click next. And we are connected. Like, I love how quick this works. Like, we're fully connected there. We've got Google Maps running. We've got our Google Assistant there as well. So we can literally hit the Google Assistant there if we wanted to to get Google Assistant going. Or we could say, okay, Google to use our Google Assistant that way. So it is kind of nice to know, if we do a long button press on the steering wheel, we can also have this setting pull up as well. And that's the same for the Android and for the iPhone side of things. We can button press here in order to be able to get to that main Android Auto screen. So as you can see there, we are fully connected. We can see exactly what's going on with time, our current status, what's going on with our current charge and things like that as well. Now we do have the flexibility of being able to customize some things inside of Android Auto. It's not quite as much as what we would have seen inside of Apple, but we've at least got the flexibility to do it. So on our phone, if we just do a quick search for Android Auto, so on your phone there, you're just gonna search for Android Auto. We've got a settings option that comes up. And as you can see, we've got our connection to car. We've got currently connected or previously connected cars. We can customize the launcher, so just drag and drop. Uh, but one thing to note, when we drag and drop here, we actually have to restart Android Auto for the changes to take into effect. So it's not that we can't do it, we can do it, just we'd have to restart it in order to make it happen. That's the same way on every vehicle, not just the Defender. But moving down, as you can see, we've got our Google detection. We've got our start Android Auto while the phone is locked, yes or no. We've got our Google Assistant, weather, and a number of other things that are available there as well. Now, one thing to note, we are wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of this vehicle. We are not wireless. Unfortunately, we'd love to see the wireless option, but we're not there, unfortunately, as of yet. But very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side, if we hit the home button there, we've got the phone that's connected. We can hop into our settings along the bottom if we want to. We've got the device that's connected there. So if we click through, ah, there we go, oh, while Android Auto is active. So Android Auto is currently active, so we could literally just disconnect and we're fully disconnected there and we can disconnect the device if we want to we've got our phone and media settings there we've got other options or we can just hit forget device in order to be, literally be able to disconnect the phone from the vehicle and as you can see there we go back both phones are now fully disconnected and it really is that simple to be able to hook up android and iphone devices inside of the defender all right, so after you've got a phone connected there, that's gonna be the basics of adding a phone and looking at factory nav. We've got some base media settings there. It looks so nice. So we've got our favorites there. We've got a player there instead. We've also got our stations. So we do have quite a few options there. And as you can see, we've got every station that's currently available based off of our current location. So we can easily adjust and we can figure out what station we wanna to tune to there if we want to. Kind of going up and down, we can literally save our presets there as well, simply by starring these things out. And it saves it as a favorite when we do that. That's kind of neat because we can then press the button along the steering wheel there in order to be able to change between active presets and then quick little audio test.
<laughs> the car is literally shaking right now and the volume's not even up to full. This thing is absolutely incredible. I love the sound inside of the vehicle here. But we've got that basic there, or we can, again, look at our stations if we wanted to there as well. And like I said, we can easily star in order to be able to save any of our presets if we wanted to go that route. We've got our HD radio there along the top, so we can kind of toggle between which option there as well. So as you saw there, we've got our devices there. We've got Sirius XM, FM radio, AM radio, etc. If we were connected through our phone again, and if we had certain things like LiveX Live, Pandora, etc., those would show up as options that we can kind of click through as well. Moving back to the home page there brings us back to this main screen. So as you can see there along the bottom, because we haven't set up our home address, we could set that up. We can search for an address or look at previous destinations or just button press in order to hot button in order to be able to pull inside of this menu instead. Button press to get back home. We can connect a phone. We can look at our media. And this is so cool. Like we don't have to jump into sub screens to change out sources and things like that. We can adjust our volume. We can mute out. We can look at our favorite stations, our presets and things like that right from this main screen. Swiping across, we've got a few other options there as well. So as you can see, we've got our Wade sensing there. And this gives us a few different options and some pointers and tips on making sure we're waiting properly. So it is kind of neat that there are quite a few different options that are available there. We can look at our 4x4 info on this beautiful screen, see exactly where we're located. We can see our pitch and roll there as well. So as of right now, the vehicle is flat. And we can see which wheel is getting which amount of power, whether or not the transfer case there is locked as well. And then we do have a few other options. So along the very top there, we can also see exactly what's going on. So we can literally raise or lower the vehicle. And you can see that happening in real time along the very top there. We also have a few other options there. So we've got our weight sensing and we've also got our terrain info. So we do have the option of being able to select out our terrain. So we do have a terrain button there. So we push that. And as you can see, we can literally customize which version of the terrain mode we're in. So we've got our eco, oh, it's so cool. It's kind of neat that it kind of like drops down and lets you know which each mode does there as well. So we've got our comfort mode, we've got our gravel, mud ruts, sand mode, and then we've got the waiting mode there as well. So certain modes you will have to be in neutral in order to be able to change between, but each mode will do something different. Then we can just button press in order to be able to get rid of the mode there as well. And that's going to be the basics of that system. Just button press there in order to get back to the home screen. And then we can swipe across one more time in order to be able to edit. And this is where we can throw a lot more things in there. So we've got our compass. We can add in our assist, our wheel information, our energy impact, driving style, slope assist. Is that everything? Yeah, that's amazing. I literally put in everything and we can... Oh, cool. And then it's just button press in order to be able to kind of readjust these things as necessary pressing back out and as you can see there look at this the tiles are now full but we've got our weight sensing there we've got our wheel info energy impact our slope assist compass etc so this is really cool the fact that it is built in here so we've got some basic off-road pages to see exactly what's going on with pitch and roll things like that as we go off-road we can see exactly what's going on with our climate settings along the very bottom there as well so our energy impact so as of right now our ac is running if we had other things showing up there as well they would literally do that they would show up front rear etc and heated steering wheel etc so every little thing is going to let you know how it's going to impact your fuel performance etc so i love the fact that we've got that option and there are so many different options inside of this thing now that's just the base mode because as you see there we get into this mode and all of a sudden we have even more options so we've got different accounts we've got some options for our seats there as well so we can literally adjust different parts of the seat so we hit power there and we can literally adjust what's going on there ah heated seat oh so we've got options for heated seats we've got the option for ventilated seat if as well so if the ventilated seat was there it would show up as an option to drop down and even here so we do have the button press there we can't get to ventilated because it's not available as an option there but we can kind of button press there in order to be able to adjust the seat there and that's the same for the driver and for the passenger side so we can adjust it that way if we want to. We can go back home into that mini button to get to every other option. So we've got our base climate control settings there. Syncing up means that we're going to go between. Actually, let me show you there. So if we press the climate button and we go to sync, that's going to take whatever the driver side is and push it over to the passenger side there as well. We can get to it from the screen or we've also got the climate button there instead. Moving back home, we've got quite a few other options there. So as you can see, we've got our trailer mode. So our trailer and towing, we can add in trailers. So that would have our trailer dimensions, etc. Moving back home there again, we've got different cameras that are available there. And this is so, so cool. Like, look at this. I love this like 360 view that it gives you and it zooms into certain things so you can see exactly what's going on with the vehicle. So I want to show you something. So like, let's say if we were to go into reverse for a second here. So we drop into reverse. We've got our full 360 mode. We can jump into different views in the camera as we go there as well. If we're going off-roading, we can literally see exactly what's going on there as well. 
we look at towing and it pushes us underneath. So we do have quite a few different options that are available there, throwing ourselves back into park very simply. Moving back, it's actually kind of neat because we could go through that way to get to the cameras. There was another option back on the home screen there as well. So we can push this button in order to be able to get to this part of the camera view instead. And look at this. So cool. Like this literally, like it, it kind of blows my mind what you can do with this thing and like how many different options and things like that are available inside of the camera. Like I love that we've got so much flexibility inside of this thing. Moving back home, we've got a valet mode. So valet mode, what that means is we have to enter in a, a four digit pin in order to be able to lock the screen out. And it's literally that. So it just locks the screen out so people can't look through your previous destinations and things like that without re-entering the code. Pressing home again and then back in, we've got our eco data. We've got our four by four info. So again, we've seen that screen a little bit earlier. And it's the same idea. So what this is essentially is going to be everything that's available for the most part inside of the screen in a nutshell. So all of our different settings and things like that. We've got our low traction launch. We've got different vehicle dimensions there, which that's kind of neat. So we can literally see exactly what the riding height of the vehicle is. Moving back and inside again, we've got our voice settings, which there are some interesting ones to point out. So if we go voice, we've got different climate commands. So we can literally see exactly what's going on with different commands. So it is kind of nice. So if you're learning your vehicle, this is definitely where you're wanting to go. You've got voice tags there as well. So you can have certain things showing up and you've also got a tutorial. So if you really want to know how this thing works and you know, kind of what I'm talking to you isn't enough, you can go to a tutorial to get more of an in-depth view and understanding of how this system works. And moving back to our command list there, so as you see with a few other options, we've got some options for a navigation command. So this literally is letting us know exactly what's available for the vehicle itself. So what options can we go to? What different things can we do? We've got Apple device commands, we've got Android device commands. So we can literally see exactly what the vehicle can do. So it is nice to know that we've got so many options inside of this thing. Now along the other side, so you saw there we do have our camera button. So for our full 360 camera, I still can't get over how amazing this thing looks. It is so, so cool. We've got a settings button along the bottom there as well. So we can literally adjust the brightness of the screen. We can turn it off if we want to. Button press to turn it on. We've got different themes. So we've got an auto theme, so dark. So this is the nighttime mode. Auto is gonna flip us between daytime or nighttime depending on how bright it is outside. And then we've got a home layout there as well. So we just changed the layout. So if we go back home for a second there, as you can see, we are now in this style screen instead. So you do have some options that are available there. It's gonna be a matter of your own personal preferences. Whether or not, I personally love the look of that kind of slider layout there instead. And then we've got our auto hold, our auto brake hold there as well. The auto brake hold is interesting because if we're, in, if we're driving, we come to a complete stop, we take our foot off the brake, it's gonna hold the vehicle in place. We've got some basics for our home screen there as well. So how do we want it to show up? We've got some others for our audio, so treble mid-range bass, subwoofer, stereo as well. And then we can look, ooh, back to audio again there. We can also figure out exactly what's going on with the positioning of the speak, of the sound. So where do we want this thing actually showing up? So if you're the only person in the vehicle, you're gonna wanna have the audio kind of focused on you. If everybody else is in the vehicle, you're gonna wanna center it out there instead. We go to our all menu. And as you, can, as you can see there, we've got our Bluetooth. So we've got the option of pairing a device that way if we want to. Mobile only, so we can connect the vehicle to a data only plan through a cell phone provider. We've got Wi Fi, so we can connect to Wi Fi at home, and then we've got some Android Auto and Apple CarPlay settings there, and then some basics for our connectivity. So we've got our MAC address and things like that as well. And ooh, moving back inside, so we've got our connectivity settings, we've got our profile settings, and now we've got even more. So vehicle settings, so things like driver assistance. The vehicle has collision avoidance and a few other options there. So we've got a few different warnings. So how quickly, or if, you, if you're getting a warning, does it happen at all? So we've got an early warning. We can turn the whole system off if we want to. We've also got emergency braking. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it'll brake for us. Reverse a rear traffic warning. So as we go to back up, if anybody's coming from the left, right, etc., it's gonna let us know of a potential collision. If it recognizes that there's potential collision, it's going to, to brake for us if we're in reverse. And then we've also got our emergency lane keeping setting there as well. We've got some basics for our cruise control, so our cruise speed assistance. We've got our adaptive speed limiter based off of the legal limit, which as of right now, we don't have the speed turned on. We don't have the cruise control set up, turned on, which is why we can't adjust that. We've got some options for cruise control as well as some driver condition monitoring. So if you start to veer over too many times without signaling, the vehicle is going to tell you to eventually that you should probably take a break and it's gonna let you know where the nearest rest area is. And then we've got some low speed maneuverability as well. So our parking aid. So as we go into reverse there, drive, whatever the case may be, because we've got a full 360 monitor, it is going to let us know 
So there we go. So we do have our reverse sensors letting us know what, exactly what's going on and how close we're getting to obstacles in behind us, etc. Moving back, we've got some safety and security settings there as well. So we also do have so audible lock warning. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want to have a sound letting us know that the vehicle is locked? Yes or no? And we've got two-stage unlocking there as well. So we can literally unlock the door with a single button press for the driver door. Unlock all doors as well. So two-stage unlocking, if we have that one disabled, what's going to happen is when we press unlock once, both, all of the doors are going to be unlocked instead. Driveway locking, so what speed before the doors automatically lock for us. Exterior lights, we've got our high beam assist, which if our high beams were on and the vehicle recognizes an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim them before turning them off and then flipping them back on again. We've got our home lights there as well. So after you turn the vehicle off, do the home lights stay on for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, etc. And back again, we've got some other settings. So we've got some other convenient settings there. So for our windows, we've got global open and close, which definitely recommend turning these ones on. Let's hop outside to see how that process works. And we do have the option of using the key fob in order to be able to roll the windows down, and it's a very straightforward process. So it's actually going to open up both of the driver passenger windows as well as the sunroof. But we're going to use this button. We're going to press the unlock button twice. On the second button press, you're going to hold it. And then you can also press the lock button to pause partway through. So watch this. We're going to go one, two, and hold. And down go the windows. So you saw there, partway through, I paused, and then I can just double press again in order to be able to continue the process. And down they go. Next up, we've got options for our mirrors. So mirror dip when we're in reverse. So those are gonna be our side view mirrors. So when we put the vehicle in reverse, our side view mirrors are automatically gonna lower to show us what's going on in the ground there beside the vehicle. Vehicle access, do we wanna have the vehicle automatically lower the vehicle for us in order to be able to give us an easier way to get inside? We've got our rain sensing wipers and then winter wipers, which means that the wipers are actually gonna sit a little bit higher up as well. And moving back, we've got our units. So do we wanna be kilometers, miles per hour, PSI, Celsius, Fahrenheit, our trip counters, etc. Units, and then we've also got our service information. So when's our next service appointment due? Some general settings, we've got some basics for our voice. So we've got our voice feedback, our voice interrupt. So you can literally use your voice in order to be able to interrupt or we can have the vehicle listen for wake words. So we can have it listen for, hey Land Rover. As you can see there, our voice command prompt shows up and this is going to be our command list. So it lets us know kind of basics of what we can do there. And we can also use your own wake word there instead if you want to. So rather than pressing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and getting that message show up, we can have it listen for a wake word there instead. Moving back, we've got some basics for the display. So we saw some of these earlier. We can adjust the brightness if we want to. We can have it automatically set up so that it's going to flip between the day or the nighttime mode. We've got other options for the map and then we've got a stealth mode there as well. So it is kind of nice that we do have a few options that are available there. Master pin is going to be used in order to turn the valet mode off. So it is kind of nice to know that if for whatever reason you've forgotten the valet mode, so the valet driver can get in and out of the vehicle, etc., you can set up a pin in order to be able to reset that one there instead. We've got our date and time there as well, so we can literally have it auto adjust based off of our GPS location. We've got our 12 and 24 hour mode, and then we've also got the, the format for the actual date itself. And then system restore, we can literally bring this whole thing back to our factory default there instead. We've also got other options. So for languages and keyboards, so we can change between, ooh, UK English, that's interesting. So we've got a few different, well, a ton of different options. I don't ever think I've seen this many options available in a vehicle ever. This is incredible and it's all available as a default. We've got options for the keyboard, our clicks, whether or not those happen, yes or no. We've got some other options for apps. So for our apps, we've got climate. So we've got our auto front, rear, et cetera. We've got our auto airflow. Do we want it to be soft and quiet, balanced, or powerful and fast? It's kind of neat, we've got those options. We've got live apps, which means that certain app information will be sent out to Land Rover directly, more or less just letting them know kind of if you've ran into any issues, et cetera. We've got our favorite button there as well. So we can literally have it set up so that when we short press it, something happens. When we long press it, something else happens. Our home tiles, we've got a few different layouts there. We've got our low traction launch as well. Media, so we've got our AM FM settings. So if we want to turn our radio, HD radio on or off, and how do we want to list the stations? And then media player settings, do we want to have it show the correct song information on USB devices? We've got navigation settings there as well. So for our map, we've got our default map, satellite, we can show it in 3D, and we can also show different point of interest icons on the map as well, and which icons are gonna be showing up. So you've got the option there. We've also got a few other options based off of our compasses there. 
root and guidance. So we've got our dynamic routing, which means that we are going to get an update for the route just based off of our traffic conditions. Do we want the fastest, the shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? What are our preferences there? Do we want to avoid carpools? Do we want to avoid toll roads? And a number of other things. So there actually are quite a few different options that we can avoid if we wanted to. We've got different options for junctions. We've got your different commute options. So we can have the vehicle literally learn our routes in order to give you the best options based off of where you regularly drive to. And then our smart guidance options there as well. And we've also got our auto start commute, which if we go to different destinations all the time, we can have the vehicle automatically pull the map up and show us where we're going based off of what's going on with our traffic conditions. Suggestions along the way. Do we want the vehicle to suggest different things as we go? Yes or no? And that's going to be the basics of the route and guidance. We've got some options for alerts. So we do when we're coming up to an upcoming turn, do we want to have nothing show up? Do we want to have a chime? Or do we want to have the voice guidance there as well? And then same idea with our safety alerts. And then some basic for our app information as well. Moving back, we've got... Ooh, what did I miss? Phone. So we've got some phone settings there. So we can have it sort different ways. And with our messaging, do we want to have messaging showing up with our tones, yes or no? Do we want to reject calls with messages if we're driving, yes or no? And then we can also edit the message templates there if we want to. Moving back, we've also got our Sirius XM radio settings. So we've got notifications, tune to start, and then we've also got some help and support options there as well. Other notifications, do we want to allow notifications, yes or no? And do we want phone, emergency, or connectivity notifications? And whether or not those ones show up independently or not. And then we've got our software update. So as of right now, we are currently up to date, but I definitely recommend make sure you connect to your Wi-Fi network at home so that if there's available an update, it'll automatically update the vehicle for you. And I believe that is going to be the basics of the media screen. So I know it was quite in depth, but I hope you learned a few things about this as well.